My name is Sam Magnin. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. To understand narcissistic rage, we first must grapple with the concept of narcissistic injury. Narcissistic injury is any threat, whether real or imagined, to the narcissist's grandiose and fantastic self-perception, to his false self. The narcissist holds himself to be perfect, all-powerful, omnipotent, all-knowing, omniscient, and entitled to special treatment and recognition, regardless of his real-life accomplishments, which are usually lacking and meager. Narcissist actively solicits narcissistic supply. He goes around eliciting adulation, compliments, admiration, subservience, attention, even being feared is a form of narcissistic supply. He needs this input and feedback from others in order to regulate and sustain his fragile and dysfunctional ego. Thus, the narcissist constantly courts people's praise and attention. But as he does so, he also risks rejection, criticism disagreement, and even ridicule and mockery. The narcissist is dependent on other people. He is aware of this dependence and of the risks associated with it. He knows that his dependence is all-pervasive and essential. But he resents his weakness. He dreads the possible disruptions in the flow of his drug, narcissistic supply. The narcissist is caught between the rock of his habit and the hard place of his frustration. No wonder if he is prone to raging, lashing and acting out. No wonder if he is the slave of pathological, all-consuming envy. All these are expressions of aggression. The very people whom the narcissist holds in contempt he derides them, he regards them as inferior, but they are also the source of his narcissistic supply, without which he will disintegrate, crumble, and be rendered dysfunctional. Narcissistic thinking is magical. In his own mind, the narcissist is brilliant, perfect, omnipotent, omniscient, and unique. So, compliments and observations that support this inflated self-image that support the false self. These are taken for granted, and as a matter of course. Narcissist believes that he deserves them. Having anticipated the praise as fully justified and in accordance with his reality, the narcissist feels that he, his traits, his behaviors, and his accomplishments have made the accolades and kudos happen. He believes that he has generated this feedback and input from people. He believes that he has brought the narcissistic supply into being. He annexes positive in input. He integrates positive feedback. And thereby he feels, irrationally, that the source of this feedback and input is internal, not external. That it is emanating from inside himself, not from outside independent sources. The narcissist take positive uh, narcissistic supply lightly because he feels that he has made it happen. On the other hand, the narcissist treats disharmonious input, such as criticism, disagreement, or data that negate his self-perception. He takes this completely differently. He accords a far greater weight to these types of countervailing, challenging, and destabilizing information, because these are felt by him to be more real and coming really from the outside. Obviously, the narcissist cannot cast himself as the cause and source of opprobrium, castigation, criticism, and mockery. So, he accepts that these come genuinely from outside and are not caused by him. The sourcing Asymmetry and the waiting asymmetry. 
the different levels of importance attached to positive supply and negative supply. This is the reason. These are the reasons for the narcissist's disproportionate reactions to perceived insults. The narcissist simply takes these insults as more real and serious than any praise. The narcissist is constantly on the lookout for slights, for offenses. He is hypervigilant. He perceives every disagreement and criticism and every critical remark is complete and humiliating rejection, nothing short of a threat. Gradually, as he is exposed to more of these criticisms and disagreements, his mind turns into a chaotic battlefield of paranoia and ideas of reference. Narcissus believes that he is mocked, ridiculed, discussed and gossiped behind his back, even when this is not the case at all. Most narcissists react defensively. They become conspicuously indignant, aggressive and cold. They become abrasive. They detach emotionally for fear of yet another narcissistic injury. They devalue the person who makes the disparaging remarks, the critical comment, the unflattering observation, the innocuous joke at the narcissist's expense. By holding their critics in contempt, by diminishing the stature of the discordant, discordant conversant, of the disagreeing interlocutor, the narcissist minimizes the impact of the disagreement or the criticism on himself. This is a defense mechanism that we know as cognitive dissonance. If the source of the disagreement and criticism is devalued, reduced, humiliated, written off, then the criticism and disagreement themselves are meaningless. Narcissists can be imperturbable, resilient to stress, and sunk for. Narcissistic rage is not a reaction to stress. It is a reaction to perceived slight, slights, insults, criticism, or disagreement. In other words, it's a reaction to narcissistic injury. Narcissistic rage is intense and disproportional to the offense. Raging narcissists usually perceive their reaction to have been triggered by an intentional provocation with a hostile intent and purpose. Their targets, on the other hand, invariably regard raging narcissists as incoherent, unjust, capricious, and arbitrary. Narcissists often vent their anger at insignificant people. They don't risk alienating their sources of supply, so they vent and they direct their rage at bystanders and innocent uh, people. So they yell at a waitress. They berate a taxi driver. They publicly chide a subordinate or an underling. They attack their own children. Alternatively, they sulk. They feel unhedonic, un unable to feel pleasure. They are pathologically bored. They drink. They do drugs. All these are forms of self-directed aggression. From time to time, no longer able to pretend and to suppress their rage, Narcissists have it out with the real source of their anger. Then, these narcissists lose all vestiges of self-control and rave like lunatics. They shout incoherently. They make absurd accusations. They distort facts. They air long-suppressed grievances, allegations, and suspicions. These episodes of unbridled aggression are followed by periods of saccharine sentimentality, excessive flattering and submissiveness towards the victim of the latest rage attack. Driven by the mortal fear of being abandoned or ignored, the narcissist repulsively debases and demeans himself and begs for forgiveness. Most narcissists are prone to be angry. Their anger is always sudden, raging, frightening, and without an apparent provocation by an outside agent. It would seem that narcissists are in constant, a constant state of rage, which is effectively controlled most of the time, but not all the time. This constant state of rage manifests itself only when the narcissist's defenses are down, incapacitated, or adversely affected by circumstances, internal or external. Pathological narcissistic anger is neither coherent nor externally induced. It emanates from the inside. It is diffuse. It is directed at the world at large and at injustice in general. 
the narcissist is capable of identifying the immediate cause of his fury. Still, upon closer scrutiny, this immediate cause is, found, is likely to be found lacking, and the anger is likely to be found excessive, disproportionate, and incoherent. It might be more accurate to say that the narcissist is expressing and experiences, experiencing two layers of anger, simultaneously and always. The first layer of superficial ire is indeed directed at an identified target, the alleged cause of the eruption, the provo provocateur. The second layer, however, incorporates the narcissist's self-aimed wrath. Narcissist's aggression is directed outside, but also inside, at himself. Narcissistic rage has two forms. The explosive type, where the narcissist flares up, attacks everyone in his immediate vicinity, causes damage, damage to objects or people, and is verbally and psychologically abusive, and sometimes physically abusive, violent. And then there is the passive-aggressive or pernicious type of narcissistic rage. Here, the narcissist sulks, gives the silent treatment, he is uh, plotting how to punish the transgressor and put her in her proper place. These narcissists are vindictive. They often become stalkers. They harass. They haunt the objects of their frustration. They sabotage and damage the work and possessions of people whom they regard to be the sources and the causes of their mounting wrath. <laughs>